Can you believe it? Another week of talking technical and um, I can tell you, I know that the whole country is suffering with some cold. But um, this morning we had, uh, how was that for you? Minus seven here in Fosburg in the Karoo and um, the maximum of the day was only 11. Okay, so there you are. So we, we uh, got a nice cold evening here. But um, I am full of ideas and thank you for all the requests. And remember, this is the, the show of the, of the public. I mean, um, if anyone just send in a request and we've got time for it, we will gladly do it for you. Because that's uh, one of the things is that you need to learn. And the other thing is, is that you can maybe find a share that you can buy or if you are nervous that you can sell the share. The big thing, also remember, if you want to learn more about technical analysis, you can always visit our website, www.fransdeclare.com, and you will find many ideas and many subscriptions how you can get involved. So let's kick off. First of all, discovery. Um, Kiran asked about discovery. Now, Kiran, look at this share, and I'm, I'm so glad that some of the viewers... Uh, drop some nice shares for us because it also gives some other uh, viewers some nice opportunities to buy. Now, Kiran, it is a nice chart here because look at that. First of all, you see this beautiful, you can almost say an inverse hammer. I like to call it a hammer because it is right at the bottom. It, it um, hits out the lows, but it's not long after that. And remember, this is discovery on a daily chart. Um, we see this beautiful dragonfly candle. Now, a dragonfly candle is always an, a candle that tells you that there is some buyers buying in the dip. And what do we see here? There's a low, there's another low, and that gives us a beautiful double bottom. And if I just draw this little line in, and now you can understand why Discovery is moving um, already up. Uh, we called it a little bit earlier for our subscribers, so maybe you're just a day or two or three late, but it doesn't matter. I think there's still some momentum here, and the reason why I'm saying that we are above this line, and that line is sitting at 142.33. Well, Discovery is moving above 142.33. This double bottom scenario is still in play. And while it is in play, it can maybe take the share all the way up. If I do a projection here, and I just want to show you, I always show the viewers. And the reason why I'm showing them, so that they can also learn um, from us. Because after all these years, we've, we've got a few, uh, you can almost say clues that we follow. And this is one of it. If you look at it, it can maybe go all the way to that level of 151.32. But I just want to check something here. I think there's a tiny little gap there. Um, yes, there is a tiny little gap. And that is between 151.43 and 151.42. So, I mean, uh, that's a one cent gap. That is not a gap. So, maybe it can reach for that. So, Kiran, if you buy it, look for 152, more or less for your level. But, I mean, if you do buy it, try and buy it as close as possible to this support line. Because if, if you can get it close to the support line, you've got a nice tight stop loss. And my, st my stop loss will be 133.50. If you want a little bit of a tighter one, it will be 137.82. And hopefully it can go all the way to reach your upper target. Fred is asking about Bitcoin. And I mean the whole world is asking about Bitcoin because all these cryptocurrencies, they were really hammered to pieces. But it was interesting to me when the S&P 500 started to recover and we almost anticipated it on the previous program. We said that the S&P is just so hammered. It, it should probably give us a beautiful relief rally. And wow, it did give us a beautiful relief rally. Even our market, I think 6,000 points in five trading days, that's a massive move. So it just shows you two things. Um, investors still believe that they can buy any dip and things will come right. And the other thing, there's loads of cash on the other side. Liquidity is still there and that's why investors pile into stocks when they just go a little bit too low. But if you look at this, um, first of all, Fred, look at that Dragonfly Doji, beautiful example of that. Just right at the bottom, you can see when it reached for this 25,780 level Bitcoin, it suddenly attracts some buyers. But for me, it's almost starting to build a base here. But um, what I'm interested in is, is this little gap here, Fred. Maybe it can close this gap. And that gap is between 344.55 
and 35180. Now, my big thing is it needs to stay above this little support line. There you are. Yes, the support line, just to draw it in there for you. It needs to stay above 314. On the dub, on the dot, 31,400. It needs to stay above 31,400. Give us this move back to close this gap. And I mean, if you want the stop loss, I mean, Bitcoin is just so volatile. I will use this uh, stop loss of uh, 25,350. Whoa, that's a big stop loss. I don't want to take a $6,000 stop loss on Bitcoin, but I'll rather use this tighter one. And that is 27,890. That's maybe a better one, but still it's a $4,000 uh, stop loss. I mean, but um, the big players are there. They're buying the cryptocurrencies. But what's interesting to me, I read some of these bigger Bitcoin and, and some of the bigger currencies, they're trying to buy some of the smaller houses up because they're struggling and they believe there's maybe some value in. So um, maybe we can see another star Coming to a fall, maybe in time to come. But there's your level for Bitcoin. Looks like a turnaround there. I like this dragonfly candle, but it needs to stay above that support line. Sue is asking about Mondi PLC. Strange enough, Sue, I analyzed it for a client the other day, and um, my last comment to him, he was he was saying to me, Franz, I bought it. Um, I made some good money. I'm 10% in the profit. And um, I, I can just imagine what the viewers will think. What will Franz say on his last sentence before he sends the email? I said to him, if you're happy with your profit, just lock it in and go. Because he is a trader and that is the old golden rule. Rather lock in a profit than uh, covering a loss eventually. Well, let's have a look at this Sue. I mean, we've seen this waterfall formation, ugly selling all the way to the downside. We've got this beautiful double bottom in place here that um, the share needs to stay above 268.67, give us a nice bounce to the top. But where will this double bottom come into play? And that is the crucial point. And we just below that, there you can see that that double bottom needs to get above, the share needs to get above 310.60. Before we can say that this double bottom can maybe move up to about 354.90. So for me, I'm a little bit worried, and the reason why I'm nervous, it is a low, oh, there's a high, there's a lower high, and we're starting to consolidate below this uh, resistance line. I want it to turn that resistance line into a support before I will get positive. And there's something else that I also do pick up here, and some of the trained eyes will immediately pick this up, because um, let's just show you here, and if I do that, you will probably see what I'm seeing, there's the left shoulder, there's the head, busy with the right shoulder, the neckline is sitting at 291.20. And um, if it drops below 291.20, we can maybe see the share, let's just go there. Um, there's the projection there, I just want to bring it down that you, so that you can have an idea here. You are, it can maybe go all the way down to this low, and that is 268.60. Seven. So just be a little bit careful. Monday had a nice uh, relief bounce, but it needs to um, consolidate above this support line, and especially that resistance line needs to turn into a, a support before we can get positive about the share again. Dago is asking about global self-storage in America. I also had a, a request for storage in South Africa, but I cannot think that we will have time for that. But global self-storage is looking like it wants to recover. Now, um, probably if I look at this chart, first of all, it is all over the show. Now, the moment I see a chart doing that, I just use a simple method. I draw a line in there, and I draw a line in there, and then I say to myself, okay, what can I see? And the moment I see that, I see that we are in a massive consolidation. We're between a consolidation of 532 and 6.34, and in between those two lines, there's almost nothing that makes me excited. Now, many of you will say, yes, Franz, it looks like that the share wants to go up, because look at that, that's a low, there's a higher low, there's another higher low, there's an higher low, we're on the brink of having a higher high. And I will say, yes, you are quite right, but what do we also see? We see a high, we see a lower high, we see a lower high, and 
we now on a very important level, share needs to break above $6 to make us excited. So for me, it's quite simple. If I get a share and I'm not 100% sure of it, I just always remind me of the fact that there is thousand other shares that you can look at. And there's thousand shares that you can maybe analyze and say to yourself, this one pays a dividend. This one has a good uh, management team. This one has got a new niche product that they're busy um, developing or they've got a market for. Or they found a market for that. Why do you want to mess around with a share that you don't know unless you've got some insider trading? But for me, I have no insider news or insider trading ideas. I just look at the chart and I say to myself, okay, Franz, can you make a few rand out of this or not? And if I cannot, I just sit on my hands and I look for something else. I can do something else here. I mean, if you're really serious about the share, you can draw that line in and say, yes, if that breaks above 6.1, that means $6.10, it can maybe go up and reach for this level of 6.34. But I mean, that's not even a 2 or 3% rise in the price and where's my stop loss my stop loss will be at 565 so really for me i i'd always say to myself if i've got a, a chart that doesn't give me a clear signal maybe a rounding bottom a beautiful a tweezer bottom or a dragonfly doji candle with a nice a lot of volume maybe inside there i just sit on my hands and i just don't do anything so for me unfortunately tabo if i look at global self-storage I just think it's maybe time to sit on your hands and wait and maybe have a cup of coffee and think about another share that you can maybe dabble into. Well, thank you for visiting the show and visiting our website. Um, let's chat again.